This is a Blaring Out with Eric Blair show tonight. Rocking the red carpet at the premiere for Dio, Dreamers Never Die, the documentary film celebrating the life of heavy metal legend Ronnie James Dio. Here with drummer Vinny Apice of Black Sabbath, Dio, and currently last in line. The importance of the Ronnie James Dio documentary, Dreamers Never Die. Yeah, I think this was fitting for Ronnie, especially my comment went viral with fucking assholes at the Rock Hall of Fame, Ronnie's not in there. You know, and it's more for him than for me. I mean, they don't want to put me in there, that's fine. But Ronnie deserves so much more, and uh, he loved his music so much, and this is really, really something special, you know. Now with the resurgence of vinyl, and I have a bunch of friends that own record stores, we're seeing kids searching out those Dio records. They want them on vinyl. Yeah. But I still feel like Dio is not really getting the due he deserves on a worldwide, over-the-top way. What do you think about that? Uh, you're, you're probably right, you know. Uh, we weren't the most commercial band in the world, but this year's been good. If anybody watched Stranger Things, <laughs> the guy on the season four wore a Dio jacket, the Dio on the back, and then Rainbow in the Dark, is in the Thor 4 movie. So it's like, we might be not the most popular poppy band, but we're, we're there, we're underground, and uh, it's more of a cult thing almost, you know? But uh, Ronnie, will, his music will never die. It'll never die. And then what are you up to right now? You're, you're with The Last in Line, correct? Yeah, with Vivian Campbell on guitar and uh, Phil Sasson on bass and Andy Freeman on vocal. We're, we're leaving actually in two days to go to the East Coast to do some shows. We got an EP coming out next, uh, next month. What's it like? How how is Vivian balancing this mega tour <laughs> with 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 Def Leppard playing stadiums and then playing with Last in Line? How do you juggle something like that? He just wants to play. It's two different things. Def Leppard's a different type of music, you know. And um, when he plays with us, he's the only guitar player. He does all the heavy lifting, all the solos, and it's a it's a real challenge for him. Uh, and we jam a lot, you know, it's not a set thing every night, anything can happen. So it's two different things, but he loves playing both, you know. And in between that, he goes uh, rally racing. He's got a rally car. Really? Yeah. Comes off tour, two days home, goes to a race, he's driving, and comes back, packs his bags, and he goes out with us. What was, what for you, what was one of your favorite songs that you enjoyed playing with Dio? Uh, man, there were so many good songs. Stand Up and Shout, um, Last in Line, We Rock. I mean, those albums, we especially the first one, Holy Diver, we were just a new band and we just made it to, as best we could. We didn't know it was going to be a classic record. Matter of fact, my roadie used to say, it's going to go platinum. I went, nah, we'll do all right, but it won't go platinum. And sure enough, actually, it just went double platinum. Took a while, but... What? You guys opened for uh, Aerosmith at the Pacific Amphitheater in 1983. What was that experience like for you? We had some dates. That was the f first uh, tour. And we had some dates opening for Aerosmith. That lasted, I think, one or two shows. <laughs> And then Ronnie said, fuck this. I'm not going to do this again, you know. And uh, I think one of the shows, Stephen and Joe Perry got in a fist fight on stage. Ronnie didn't want to open for them. And uh, Wendy booked us a theater tour. And we had Queensryche opening. And that was our first tour. And then the album came out. And it, we started climbing the charts. And the next thing you know, you know, we're playing the Forum and the big arenas and stuff. It was kind of like what you dream of, you know? The Blaring Out Show.